Here's how we're just 19 years old. I bought out an Amazon warehouse and resold it on eBay to make thousands in profit. So this happened back in October of 2022. I was looking at a sale in estatesales.net and I saw that it was run by a dealer, which I've never seen before. Um, I thought it was just gonna be a dealer who was just reselling her inventory that she couldn't sell. So I thought it was just gonna be stale inventory for the most part. Um, but I went there anyway. I got there two hours early and I waited outside for a while, but I was in the first wave in, so I was really happy about that. Um, she had a lot of weird stuff. She had a lot of antiques and a lot of stuff that she had when she hosted other sales. She was a professional um, estate sale lister. Like she would run people's estate sales and stuff like that. So she had a lot of stuff that didn't sell at sales and that she would bring back to her warehouse. So a lot of it was stale inventory. But to be surprised, I actually found some stuff that um, I never thought I was going to find. So there was a second level balcony um, that I went up to. And I think I was one of 10 people in there at the time. So I went up to the second level balcony and what I found was absolutely insane i found around 15 boxes of pallet amazon warehouse bins with brand new in the box electronics and these things were filled to the brim so i got straight to work just getting a pile together of everything that i wanted so i think for when i first got there i just created a minimum of like 20 dollars. so if it sold for more than 20 dollars on ebay i put it into a pile and i started building my pile I think I did that for over three hours and I didn't even get through all the boxes, but by the time that I spent three hours doing that, um, I was completely done. I, I, I honestly was spent and tired, um, but yeah, it was, it was crazy. So the thing was that I was really stressed out the whole time because it was really hot up there first off. And second off, uh, I didn't know what she was going to charge me. So I was kind of putting this pile together, but like three hours doing it, I was like, there's a chance that she's gonna want a lot more than I'm willing to pay and that I wouldn't be able to make money. So I was stressed out about that. And then I was also stressed out that someone would just come up there and um, start competing with me. At the time I had a monopoly on it, no one else was there. And I was I realized how much money I was making, how much stuff there was. But again, I didn't know the price, so I didn't know how much money I was gonna be able to make. So I bought a pile together and it was probably about, I would say 150 to 200 items, which is brand new in the box of electronics. Um, I thought she was gonna charge me around $1,500, $2,000 for everything, which was around $10 an item. And uh, I was prepared to negotiate. And then she hit me with $400. She said that I could have everything for $400. I, I was actually really suspicious. I was like, she knows, like she, she actually came up while I was going through everything and was like, oh, look at this. This thing sells online for $80. Oh, like, look at this. It sells online for $100. So I thought she had a really good idea of how much stuff she had up there. But I knew she told me she didn't have the time to list everything. I mean, it was 15 pallets worth of stuff and I knew that she was doing other things. So um, it makes sense. I guess she wanted to get rid of it, but she gave me everything for $400. And that's when I realized that I needed to just shut up. I didn't care how tired I was. I went through and went through all of the boxes. I had over two truckloads of stuff. So the problem is when I bought everything, I bought the first pile for 400. And then after that, she was also really lenient with the, pri uh, with the prices. I kept on saying that, oh, I got all the good stuff already. You know, all the, all the piles gone, which was true. I, I picked out most of the good stuff and I was going through the scraps for the most part. But there was still a lot of money to be made. Again, I wasn't picking up stuff. It wasn't worth more than $20, $25. So I picked up probably around 300 to 400, I would say, items in the end. I couldn't really tell. It was just I had to go back. It was an hour drive there, but I had to go back to pick up the car and load up the car again. There was that much stuff. It was it was one of the most exhilarating experiences of my life. I, I, can't, I can't believe to say that I was working during this time and I made that much money. And it was, it was awesome to think that because she, she actually bought out the Amazon warehouse herself. She had a friend who owned an Amazon warehouse and went under or something. I forget the story, but she had to sell everything and liquidate it all. So she sold it to her. She stored it up and then she sold it to me and I was able to make thousands of dollars in profit. So let's say the biggest thing that I learned in the past three years of reselling and about buying out this Amazon warehouse is that you need to take chances on sales. So the biggest thing in garage sales and trying to make a full-time in income off garage sales is you need to get to a lot of sales. You need to be buying a lot of stuff because the more stuff you buy, the more profit you can make. As long as you're doubling your money, um, each thing that you buy is a big investment into how much money you're gonna make. So if you're going out and still spending 100 to $200 at one sale, you're making a good amount of money uh, and it definitely adds up. So the biggest thing that I learned in the past three years is that you need to get out there. You need to be going to sales. Even if they don't look great, um, it's better than sitting home and doing nothing where you're not making any money unless you are making money some other way. But if you're making a, looking to make a full-time income from garage sales, it's really important to get out there. Even if a sale doesn't look great, 
so many times I've been to a garage sale and there's other stuff that isn't listed or pictured that I ended up buying. And because of the lack of pictures or lack of description of what's there, I end up having a low amount of competition and I can score big. So if you guys like this kind of garage sale content and learning about what type of garage sales there are, where to find the best garage sales, or just cool garage sale stories, follow for more.